For USCFootball.com, I'm Jack Smith, joined by Chris Trevino for instant analysis from USC's Wednesday evening practice of LSU Week. Chris, we're back. It feels so good. I missed you all summer. I'm very happy to be back on instant with you. I am not... I ain't missed you, and I'm excited we're doing our instant together, but I am not excited for all the people asking me how short am I in the comments because you dwarfed Connor in the previous ones. Now it's my turn to get ridiculed on the comments. That's the only thing I'm not looking forward to, but I'm so glad to have you back, Jack. Uh, if they ask you how short you are, that's bad, but if they say how tall are you, then they see you as tall, so that's good. Yeah, I think it's going to be how short I am, so we'll see. I think he's very tall, folks. I, I, I'm standing on a little shoebox. Uh, he's purposely trying to not look quite as tall as he is normally. But, Chris, we had Wednesday practice today. It's normally a Tuesday practice kind of a day for USC because they play on Sunday. So yesterday was, quote-unquote, Monday's practice. Today was, quote-unquote, Tuesday's practice. What were your observations? Well, we're in full pads, and I know probably a lot of people were upset that they were not in full pads yesterday, but as you pointed out, it was a Monday practice. They're not in full pads on Monday. Full pads today, and tackling was the thing, especially with the defensive backs. That was kind of the first drill we got to see, and they were having fun tackling. The, uh, the defensive backs were split into safeties and the cornerbacks, and they were using that big old ring, which I always just want to get a tackle to when I see it rolling, but they were dropping back, dropping back, sprinting forward, going through, tackling through the bag, squeezing through. I got a great shot of that. I'll have video up. But it was a fun little drill to watch, you know, because we don't get to watch as many drills, and this is a new one we've kind of seen up close. But tackling was an emphasis for the defensive backs. Hitting the sled was an emphasis for the defensive line and linebackers, and then some coverage drills as well for the uh, linebackers as well. Yeah, you could hear Matt ends throughout the coverage drill saying, you stay on the corner, you're staying on the on the slant. There were, I think, two routes with, with three defenders. They were all moving around in zone coverage. That was kind of the first time I can remember in my couple years covering the team where we've seen them go into actual coverage while we're there. So I don't know if you guys have seen that earlier in the offseason, but that was kind of a first for me. We've seen it a little bit, but it seems like every other practice they are just adding a little bit more coverage. They'll do tackling, they'll do edge rushing stuff, but they're always emphasizing a little bit of coverage drills, especially with Matt Enns. Just getting that communication down, look, you're supposed to pick up him, the situation you're going here over there. Obviously, we know that was a big, big issue in 2023. We also got to talk to uh, D Danton Lynn today as well as defensive players. We'll start with Danton Lynn. What stood out to you from his comments? I mean, not much. I know if, if you're comparing defensive coordinators, Alex Grinch liked to talk a long time for answers. Danton Lynn is not that way. He gives short answers. He says what he wants to say, and that's it. And not a lot of times there's much in there. The key word that I heard is they feel prepared. He feels prepared for this game upcoming. Obviously, it's a big one for USC. It's a big one for LSU, but especially for both defenses, breaking in new defensive coordinators. But there's a lot of pressure on that USC defense because they were so bad last year. They can't be much worse, uh, Jack. So everyone's predicting Dan Lynn to be the savior, but it's a big first test with that US, LSU offensive line. You know, they're going to go try to run the ball. We'll talk about those comments in a little bit. But he said they feel prepared, and prepared was a word we heard a lot throughout the scrums uh, here after Wednesday practice. So, again, they can say that, but we have to actually see it on Saturday. We cannot confirm or deny if they are prepared or not. And yet when he was asked what stood out about LSU, it was kind of the size, the, the big offensive linemen, big backs, big tight ends. And he does think it's a good first test for USC and seeing how this, this bulk up over the offseason has worked out. I mean, you can't add 1,400 pounds and be the same run defense as last year. So they got to show that they know how to use the size uh, when defending the run, when defending the pass, trying to get around those tackles, trying to bring down the big backs. That's something that he preached kind of throughout his entire time talking. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, it's the SEC. It's like the top of the top, you know, USC now in the Big Ten. It's going to be a fun matchup and the whole world will be watching because it's Sunday. That's the only thing anyone's going to watch. But yeah, everyone's going to be watching. Can USC handle those SEC athletes? Can they handle that SEC size? USC is bigger. They have a new defense. Can they stop the run? That's going to be a critical thing. If USC can't stop the run, it's going to be a long Sunday for USC fans. Yeah, I asked him, too, about Garrett Nussmeyer. He says he's impressed by the arm. A lot of things that Nussmeyer does impress him. He, he did say they don't have a ton of film on him, but they're preparing for it kind of like they would any other quarterback. You can't do anything differently just because you haven't seen a quarterback on tape. And that's a little bit of what Lincoln Riley said yesterday. They, they kind of brushed aside that, and they brushed aside a lot of LSU comments today. Pretty much everyone that went up to talk was asked, what do you think about you know Will Campbell and, and him saying LSU's going to run the ball? And do you put that up on the bulletin board, or do you cast it aside? They all 
had the right media trained answers for that one. It's just outside noise. Do not worry about outside noise. Some even said, I think Danton was like, I'm not really sure what you're talking about. I've been game planning this whole week, so I'm not really even sure. Do I believe that? I actually do kind of when it comes to Danton Lynn, but some of the players were like, yeah, I'm not really, really sure what you're talking about. So yeah, we didn't expect any good answers out of that, but yeah, Will, Will Campbell, the All-American left tackle for LSU and probably the number one offensive lineman taken in the next year's draft. Yeah, they're going to run the ball. I mean, what do you not want him to say? Because USC was really bad at running the or defending the run last year. LSU was going to try to establish its will up front and run, run, run. They have a new quarterback. So maybe you want to lean on the strength of that offensive line. I know they're kind of weak in the middle and they're good on the, the on the outside and they have two really experienced guards. But you would expect LSU to go in there and try to test USC's biggest weakness from last year and make them prove that they're better in that in that facet and you know USC does have questions on the interior they don't have that true true nose tackle so we're going to see what Danton Lynn has cooked up to plug up the middle of that LSU defense and get those linebackers in space and making plays and filling those gaps which we'll talk about in a little bit because we did get to talk to two linebackers today. Yeah, it's almost like Will Campbell saying, yeah, we're going to run the ball. as like any USC quarterback ever going into the first week saying, yeah, yeah, we're going to pass the ball. It's like, yeah, of course, you're going to try and do that as LSU. USC would try and pass the ball as, as USC, especially against an LSU defense that also struggled a lot last year and hasn't been the same in the secondary as of late. But you mentioned the other people we got to talk to, a couple of linebackers. I talked with Greedy Vance. I know Braylon Shelby talked as well. What stood out to you from some of the other guys we got to talk to? Not really much from Braylon Shelby. You know, he wasn't giving much. The Easton Mascarenas Arnold, the he'll be a captain for USC in week one. And then Mason Cobb, you know, Easton talked about how, you know, LSU presents a lot of tough matchups. You know, they're big, they're strong, they're fast. It's the SEC, but I like his quote. And he said, fear no man. You know, they're going to that fearless. You know, I, it doesn't matter that it's an SEC team or it was Utah State. They got to go out there and play. Biggest stage imaginable, you know, on Sunday in Vegas. Fear no man. I like that mantra from him. Uh, just going in there with a, you know, no fear in their hearts, you know, kind of going to this game. And then Mason Cobb, you know, talking about how, you know, it hurt them last year at how bad they were as a run defense team. Because if you're a linebacker, that's like your number one thing. Stop the run, plug the gaps, and teams were just running all over them last year. So, you know, we said it hurt that they were, you know, bad as a linebacker. It hurt him. You know, they have pride in stopping the run. So he feels a lot better about the team and their ability to stop the run this year. He's seen guys up front handle those blocks, freeing up space, and they can just go in there and make their job easy and plug the gap. You know, he said a lot about that. That's what he's seeing in practice. That's what's giving him confidence going into this game. But again, we have to see it on Saturday. Just because you do it in practice out here on Howard Jones Field, you got to go do it in Allegiant Stadium when you got uh, some top guards and top tackles pushing their way in front of you. So I think it's going to be interesting, but they feel prepared. They feel confident. You know, they're going to be able to stop the run, but we're going to see. You mentioned the biggest stage, and I got to talk to Greedy Vance. He was with Florida State the last couple of years. Not only did he play LSU in back-to-back -back years, but it was a neutral site first week of the season game against LSU, and Florida State won both of them. So, you know, he mentioned that they went in with the mindset, everybody, you know, the media loves the SEC, but we're going to approach it as just one game. He said didn't really see a difference in playing LSU, you know, compared to any other team on their schedule. But he said it did give them a lot of confidence to come out with a win like that in week one, because if you go out there and you beat one of the, the national powerhouse is in the first week, you feel unstoppable the rest of the year because you feel like you've already knocked off one of your biggest wins in the first week of the season. So that kind of gives a point to if USC is able to win this one, the confidence from there could be huge throughout the rest of the schedule. Yeah, absolutely. And I've, I mentioned this on the Helium Boys pod, you know, there's a lot of pressure on both teams because whoever gets off with this win leaves Las Vegas with a win. You feel great. I mean, you, USC would then be going into Utah State and, you know, they're going to beat up on the Aggies let's be honest and then you're 2-0 you get a bye week and then you go into your big road game against Michigan you're 2-0 with extra rest going to that big matchup you're feeling awesome but if you lose to LSU you come back you're 1-1 one one, you're you're searching a little bit because then you got to go to Michigan it's so tough to not get that win and either for either team you know it sets them up so well for the rest of the season gives them a big marquee top 25 win great on the resume Great for the confidence, especially if you play well on defense for either seed, for either side, excuse me, breaking in new defenses. So, you know, USC doesn't get a confidence booster. They're going to have to live in the moment and play in the moment and learn, you know, how this defense all works together against an actual different opponent and not somebody in practice. So 
a lot of pressure for USC fans. They're very nervous. This is a big game. Same for LSU fans. Who's going to walk out there feeling great? Okay. Will it be USC? Will it be LSU? I don't know. We're going to have to see. Yeah, because on the other side, LSU has lost four straight season openers, including both years under Brian Kelly. They went into that matchup and lost to Florida State. In two games, you could argue they should have been there and won, and that kind of not derailed completely their season, but it, they didn't win national championships. They didn't go to the playoff. They didn't do what's expected at LSU, which, you know, that could be the case here again. It's hard to argue which team needs this one more. It kind of feels like both coaches are in desperate need of a win. They both can't have one, but I don't know whether it harms Brian Kelly or Lincoln Riley more to have a loss here in week one. I think I'm probably going Brian Kelly because you can't lose three straight season openers after taking a job. I don't know. I would actually kind of lean towards Lincoln just coming off that year, and he still doesn't have a signature win at L- or excuse me at USC. He's still searching for that win you know so last year obviously was a disappointment on many many faces so if you could just get that win get that monkey off your back if you will and get oh we got a top 25 win oh we beat lsu oh we're set up nicely for the rest of the season that would do wonders for lincoln riley you know i i could agree you can make the argument for brian kelly as well but they went 10 and 2 last year so they were in a decent spot i know lsu standards are super high but usc at lincoln riley they need this win just to get a little bit of goodwill back. I know they have a little momentum off the Holiday Bowl, but you really need that positive swell from the fan base. And knocking off LSU, team ranked higher than you, would do a lot. I think the good news is for both teams that it's a 12-team college football playoff this year. You're not thrown out of the mix with one loss here. You're not completely out of it with two losses. So a team could win and be set up really well for the college football playoff. You can endure a loss in week one, and if you continue to play well the rest of the way, then then you could be in the college football playoff. I compare it to in 2016, USC played Alabama week one. They lost 52-6. to six. Then they went on and they started 1-3 and three, but then won the rest of the games. They finished at a point where they would have made the 12-team playoff despite a three-loss season and a big blowout in a neutral site and that's the last time USC's played a regular season neutral site game so you can survive with a loss but it would be great to have a win Chris do you have any more thoughts from today's practice uh did you watch that game I did watch that game I was uh I want to say I was don't don't tell me don't tell me how old you were well I know I was 13 but I'm trying to figure out where I watched that game uh that was a tough one I was there so you made me feel super old but yeah I think that was my first season covering the team. So I like, what did I get myself yeah, into? What, what did I get myself into? Let's just hope they don't do the uh, the barking dogs walk out of the uh, the tunnel again, which is USC fans never letting them live live it down, and college football fans as well, because that's a meme consistently. So just come out nice, easy, fear no man. Should we do that as a media team? We'll recreate the the dog pile and and yeah. being on the leash and then getting unleashed. I think I could do it pretty well, actually. I, I would give it my all, but I don't think we should do that. All right, Chris has promised he's going to do it. Make sure you're coming to the meetups in Vegas where Chris is going to showcase his his dog work moves. He's joining Eric Henderson. But that's all for us here on Instant Analysis. USC is is done with media practices for the week, which means the next time we'll see this group play football is in Allegiant Stadium on Sunday against LSU. We'll have meetups on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, so make sure you're joining us out there in Vegas. He's Chris Trevino. I'm Jack Smith. Make sure you're checking out uscfootball.com for more.